Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to take your own paint by, let's find where there, no glare there, um, how to turn a paint by number into this three-dimensional, you know, I'm just going to put in B-reel footage, uh, that way it's easier, but I wanted to show you guys how I took a basic off of Amazon direct out of the package paint by number and turned it into what I feel like is something that I'm really proud of that I had a lot of fun with and it's a little bit of a um, memory shadow box with some of the other things that we glued in there and check this out y'all well I'll show you at the end there is something I'm pretty excited about that we're gonna pop in uh, that you'll see you'll see <laughs> I've spent longer than I meant to on this project, but I had a whole lot of fun with it and um, I can't wait to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so here you can see I've started by blocking in just some of the darker colors and establishing the background really helped me, but other than that I just proceeded like standard paint by number. There wasn't a whole lot of like deviation from that until so something that I'm doing here to try out just a little different is I've gone with the mid-tone on the hat here and I'm doing an, like an underpainting of a diluted, it's for this one it's the number 17 color which is like a carroty orange. So it's watered down significantly more than um, what it would normally be but this is helping me to, I'm going to be going back over all of these spaces but I don't know I'm just gonna try out I'm interested to see what kind of cohesive this uh, cohesiveness this might give us on the whole paint by number so here I am working on sorry for the wobbly camera so here I'm working on this gnome's nose and I'm doing a base color of white because I mean I can still see the lines through it but it's not nearly so bold so I've got a 15 and a 13 and over here I've got a 15. So I'm going to go ahead and just start building up little layers to block out those colors because I didn't earlier so you can see <laughs> even through some of the more opaque paints you can still see the numbers through which makes me a little bananas like it's driving me cray cray. Um, that's alright though we'll figure it out. It is not to be this way but it is just a paint by number I'm not gonna like lay an egg over it um, but it is good to know for in the future <laughs> um, but this is how it's coming along and I've started working and blending some of the different layers over here but I've stopped doing that off camera because I wanted to share that experience with you guys so that you know what I'm putting into it and hopefully those of y'all with more experience than me can be like hey you're doing it the hard way just do this instead and so that's my hope <laughs> at least and I'm going to let this um, this dry, and then I'm going to start in on the layers with the actual color, the 15 and the 13. Hey y'all, so I've been working on this paint by number. Um, it's linked down in the video description, and it's been a minute since I've recorded last. So whenever this is all edited together, I don't know how much I'm going to be repeating myself. Um, but yeah, good luck <laughs> to all of us, I guess. Um, so I had a lot of fun really getting carried away blending out the caps and I still made like the dots like really like kind of bold and cartoony um, but the thing is with paint by numbers it really it does start to get a little once you get up close uh, they're very blocky and like cell shaded lumped together so like the farther out you are the cooler they look but I really like getting those fine details I feel like that's where the magic happens so that's where I want to be making some magic you know um that sounds silly but I think you get what I mean so my first step for because the whole point of this is to kind of um you know kick it up a notch a little bit like how to take our paint by numbers to the next level and that's making sure that and it's really difficult with some of these, like, like, this paint is almost like a jelly gouache, so like slightly more uh, opaque than watercolors. It is not very, like, I don't know how many layers I've put over these, and I'm still able to see the number through them. So if I had gone through and just used, like, a heavy-bodied um, white first to block out those numbers, that would have been, I think, a better route to go. I just go through I don't have it on hand but typically these kits do have 
they've got it where there's like the numbers and stuff on it and that lines up. But I'm just going to come through and with a lot of these paints, please pardon, you're going to hear the, uh, it's cold and our heater's fixing to turn on. So that's just life this time of year. But as we go through and add more layers, yeah, the whole point of having that kind of duplicate that has all the numbers, it, it's almost as though they printed the exact same image that's on the canvas just onto some uh, printer paper. And that way you can look and compare and be like, okay, so this one right here, that's this number. And we can start as we go in and do more layers, blending those overlapping edges together. We can take advantage of how translucent these paints can tend to be and just start tucking them in. So I'm actually going to zoom in significantly, oh, that's a little too much. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of see things that farther back maybe looked more blended together are now, you know, through this perspective, uh, you can really see where the different sections and stuff are. So again, just coming through. And I'm getting to where I'm laying the paint on really, really thick. But you can just see how I'm blending over that edge, both into the lighter color on one side of it and the darker color on the other side. Now, I wouldn't come do and I wouldn't come through and do this on where it's like the edge of an object, so like the edge of the shoe here or the edge of the beard. I don't want to be blending, you know, something that's much more forward in the painting with something that's much more farther back so like the background or the shoe or something so that's just my whenever i'm looking at something i'm like okay is this all one object because i only want to be blending that one object now the one that i really wanted to demonstrate this on is on the very first part that i had painted on this paint by number and let me get this shifted over so that you can see now this one uh, I'm going to start with the quite dark. Our number three was the darkest. And so we just come through and I'm just blending this with a wet brush with a little bit of paint. I'm just blending it over between where those two edges. So like right here, I just want to blend it one way or the other. There we go. And you can even use your finger to kind of lighten things up a little bit. So yeah, just just rendering it really. Because if you do it on one side and not the other, it keeps it crisp, I think. So just coming through. Doing, I mean, a really light wash and almost just scrubbing it into the other colors. And if you ever have any doubts, um, you know, just look at the print off that came with it and double check and make sure that you are doing, in fact, the right colors. Though, honestly, if you like the way that it looks, Feel like you're doing it right <laughs> you know like just because uh my favorite thing about paint by numbers actually is that they do allow or they do provide a full structure but you can also totally deviate from that if it's in your heart to do so like there's no nobody's grading this like there's not a wrong way to do it if you like how it looks it's art you did it <laughs> you, like you won so there we have that blended out I'm going to come through, rinse my brush, and now I'm going to blend between the lighter colors, and I'm just going to grab this, and I'm just doing almost a half and half onto one side, like wherever that line delineating between the two colors was, I'm just rubbing it the color around on both sides. And now we can rinse the pigment out of our brush. And I'm going to buffer it in even more on the pale part. So I'm lifting some of that pigment out with my damp brush. Drying it off with just this microfiber towel. It doesn't have to be microfiber. 
it's just that's what I'm using I like to do this when the base layers are already dry because that way I'm not having to worry about lifting any of the paint away from the canvas itself I'm just building some more layers on top and again if you can see the number at all like at this point I don't mind adding a little bit of texture to some of the colors coming through smudge 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 buff 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 but like with most things it's just a whole lot of doing that same thing over and over again over the entire canvas until boom you're an artist and you've done it <laughs> basically is that that's how this works right so much of anything is whatever you're doing just be consistent about it and you're going to get a really cool result because it's going to look even if it's not necessarily what you had intended if you're consistent it'll make it look like it's you know been stylized and that that's was intentional <laughs> and this is going to be the last bit of painting that i show on this piece because after this we get to start the fun part, which is framing it up and adding in some of the different components. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to go get the hot glue, hot glue gun heating up. So this is one of the shadow boxes. I'd actually gotten like a mega pack of them because I plan on making some of these and giving them away for Christmas presents um, or maybe giveaways here on the channel. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get this unwrapped. So for these corner pieces, I do recommend keeping them. For one, they're great for storing, like kind of being a little bit of a file organizer if you're a hoarder like me. Um, but also, say I, I do do, I, like if I were to do a giveaway on this piece or if I were to um, give it as a gift, it'd be really nice to be able to put something on it that protects the corners. and. Well, the, considering these were designed to protect the corners, they should do a pretty good job of it. So, yeah. <laughs> like a little, for like putting, I don't know, stuff in. Why am I like this? Hehe. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue. This one is back loading. But since this one is back loading, I think we're going to have to, let's see how it's assembled. Oh, there's some like pin board and everything. Okay. See, so yeah, I'm just making a drop cloth for some of the paint and um, hot glue and things that we're going to be doing. Now, these are leaves that I had gathered and pressed out from the garden. I'm going to set this off to the side because I don't want to be breaking it. Let's see. That's my little Millie dog. Okay, so I was going to try to use some silk floral. I don't know how we're going to mount our painting to this because I really thought it would be like cardboard. Perhaps we can pin it. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys. So, considering this one is a backloading and it has these little turn thingies on them, I was thinking about trying to trim down the uh, canvas. But then it occurred to me that I think, the thought occurred to me, that we could just use the extra material that's on there to glue like to glue it so I'm going to start by removing these corners so I would, if y'all have a better way of doing this please let me know because right now I'm a little bit in the mindset that it's like well at least I'm only messing up my painting and not your painting so if this doesn't work oops then um hopefully I'll have found out note to self canvas doesn't rip clean the way that paper does also, this was my very first time painting on um, canvas that hasn't been stretched. 
like onto which and it's not like I'm super experienced in that um, because I've only ever done that like painted on a canvas that's been stretched once so it's one for one now second time painting on canvas ever so I think I think I'm, I'm figuring it out we're doing good right <laughs> so let's see I'm gonna flip this around this is not my ideal ideal workstation for this for doing stuff flat but I am going to let me reposition the camera so again a flat surface would likely be much much better but here we are so I'm just lining this up on this side and then I'm going to put a bend in it to wrap it around and instead of stapling like how we would if this were you know on the um being stretched on those canvas the wooden back those wooden pieces <laughs> for stretcher bars I don't know but now I'm in with the hot glue And then who gets hot through the canvas? Just pressing. The nice thing about this, I guess, is that if I do booger it up real, real bad, um, we can just take a heat gun and melt the hot glue off and get on with our life. Um, I think I'm going to cut, before I go further, I'm going to cut out tabs for a full range of movement. For our little these things yeah, this is gonna be easier to get in there before the glue is down there we are and now oh yeah this is gonna work yeah I think so Okay, and now from there, I'm going to come around to the other side. I haven't glued the other pieces yet, just because I'm still figuring it out. Oh no, I went way far over on one side. No! Oh shoot. Okay, it's okay. Let's see how well this pulls up. Creep. Um, off of, oh, you know what I should have done? I just googled how to do this. Um, no. <laughs> you could probably just... I don't know. Let's see. Okay, well that's interesting that we're just going to have a little bit of a border all around the edge. So I had pulled it to where I could see the paint, but it looks like... The, it said it was a 16 by 20 piece of artwork, so that's the size frame that I got, and I presumed, my bad, um, that it would be perfect. It is not, but that is fine. So now, in its new position, I'm pinning it with my fingers, actually. Hello, free straight pins that I'm going to use to temporarily pin my thingy, like so. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it just in like that. And now I can pull and reposition without <laughs> having to rip off hot glue if it doesn't work. So there's one. Yeah, and I bet, ooh, I've got some flat head pin. I'm just gonna go grab those. So I have grabbed got a razor in there for tidying things up. Um, I have these pins that have like a little flat nail head on them and I'm going to test and see if these work for just tacking I 
and I'm just positioning. Let's check top to bottom. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <clears throat> so I'm taking all the pins out again. And we're going to start at the top now. And I'll show you guys how I'm going to cover up. You could just paint over it. Um, apparently I'm not about that life. But I'm going to do something other than just paint over it. That's going to lend itself, I think, to the uh, a really cool looking final project. So placing that pin in. And this is going to be nice because that shouldn't be... In, intrusive at all like it shouldn't be an obstruction to try and if there's a sick paper clip I'm just putting that on that end I'm coming in and putting that on that end and I'm just making sure that if these were nails they are hammered in all the way because I don't want them snagging on anything and I think that'll do for that so I'm going to flip it over. I'm kind of enjoying that it has this like slightly squishy flopped um, foam board as a background because it's really helping me get nice and tight. Like uh, for those of y'all who've been following the channel for a while, whenever we do our picture frame jewelry displays, how I'll put a little bit of batting behind that because it makes it look like super overstuffed and plush. I, this has given me that vibe. coming through again trying to make sure everything's pulled nice and tight and I go through these pins like crazy anyhow so I don't mind using them up like and these are quite dull and old like I've had these pins for at least a decade so oop, I want to make sure that we are getting it in nice and straight though because well, I'm not worried about pushing a pin through the backing here. I definitely don't want to be pushing a pin through the front and then, oof, that hurt. Well, hey, baby girl. Yeah. What's up? So there's that. And now I'm going to pull it around to the side. Pull in nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other two sides and meet you back here. Alrighty guys, so now um, I am going to, I know I'd said that I wasn't, but here we are. Um, <laughs> I am going to go ahead and hot glue these edges down. Just cause I would rather hot glue them than either leave them flopping or um, trim them off and risk a rough edge. So again, just coming through, doing a bead of our hot glue. And just wrapping it nice and tight. I'm going to trim out the tabs on the other three sides. So I've cut all the tabs and now we're going to hot glue all the tabs down. So now you can see we have all that hot glued together and I'm going to flip this around and we're going to glue some of these leaves from the garden. And I'm okay with them overhanging a little bit but I just want to practice stacking them to see how I would like them because some that was so pretty. I love that leaf. So I've kind of framed the leaves around to see where I want what go in where. And I'm just going to do a glob of hot glue. And you could totally use some silk floral, but I kind of liked that, you know, making this painting that took me most of October. Um, like, I got the bulk of the painting done in, like, three days and then lollygagged about until now it's, you know, 
end of fall. It's not even really looking like fall anymore. It looks like winter outside, but that's okay. So I like using elements that I found out in the wild, like just out in nature, um, as a way of making this into a little bit of a memory shadow box as well. So I'm going to do another little glob right there because I have little things that I want to just suspend inside the box. Like um, we found, well, <laughs> Randy had picked me a, um, a little sycamore seed pod that was just like small and cute. And I thought it'd be nice to incorporate that on here. And then leaves from that I found out in the garden, which you could totally add some paint to these to make them look a little more vibrant but I like the muted tones I think it contrasts well with the vibrancy of the gnomes and I'm not worrying about the stems overhanging the corner just yet because we'll we'll take care of that uh, this one didn't quite survive getting pressed but these three did so I'm gonna do this one here and I don't mind a bit covering up these leaves because I don't really like how they came out and so I knew whenever I was painting this that I was going to be covering up different sections like I didn't really worry about the sunflower and I didn't really worry about those leaves up in the corner because I had plans and I don't know I think do I want to do that one because the veining of the leaf looks really cool doesn't it as opposed to yeah I think I'm going to do that so I'm just going to do a little line and you don't have to set the whole leaf like we can have it come in a little interrupted you know to where it's hanging off the edge because I'm going to go through and again I'm going to trim that up and then I'm going to put that one there just enough to add a little bit of three dimension Oh, I really like that one there. Oops. I don't want to get any little hot glue globs all over everything, but I do want everything uh, secured real nice. So, I don't know, I may end up still using this one. I like it. Now, if this weren't going into a shadow box, um, I don't think I'd be using just bare uh, natural leaves without any sort of sealer or anything on them to, because otherwise they would just crumble to dust, especially while dusting or something like that. So there we go. And now for right here, let's see. I think I'm gonna take one of these. Do I want a small one? No, we could do two. So there's one and two. So let's see which of these we like better. Oh, I think that's going to be perfect. <laughs> we may use both of them though. So for the sunflower, I'm going to come through and I want to just cut off this back plastic part. So really strong scissors. If you're using scissors, make sure there's no actual wire in there. But I mean, that just works so perfectly. <laughs> and so I'm going to come in. Now I need to think about this because there's, I was considering doing some stuff around the edge. And also I need to get some of the dog fur off of it make it as clean as possible. I think this will be okay. And then we'll do our other stuff around the edging. I am super duper excited to show you guys like uh, my thoughts and plans for this. And boop, just right there. And I am pressing nice and firm. And I want to hold it for a moment that way the hot glue can relax a little. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Okay, so for this one here, I was thinking about possibly doing it right there, possibly on the sign. Um, 
maybe just right here tucked in. Yeah, let's do that right there. I like that. So again, we're going to take this and just snip right off on the back. Uh oh, now this one I snipped a little too greedily. Um, so I'm going to, so the green part fell off. So I'm going to do just a spot of hot glue to get that to connect back together because it's this green backing that keeps our flower assembled. And then I'm going to do just a circle glob. There we go. Making sure no little weird bits. Um, and doop. Just popping that right there. Now I want to give them enough space between each other that their petals don't look too smushed, like smushed cheek to cheek. Yeah, so there's another little, and we could put like buttons and stuff. Like, the, the possibilities for this, you guys, are endless. So you could make little sculpted polymer clay bits and bobs and glue that stuff on there. I kind of feel like we need something over here now. I don't know, we'll figure it out, but I really like that. I like the layering of the leaves over in the corners. Um, oh my gosh, is it really coming together? I think it is. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's address the frame. Okay, so making sure that the way that we're going to be hanging this, like that our, we've identified where the top is. Um, so now I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna grab myself a couple extra sticks of glue because once I get into the thick of this, I'm not going to want to stop until I'm done. more glue sticks hopefully that'll that should get us through I don't want to weigh the thing down and glue but I'm just taking little bits of moss here and I'm doing a little bit and then globbing it on and I'm positioning it to where it's crammed towards the front like I want the glue behind it because as this is visible I'm actually gonna I know we just talked about identifying which side's the front it's gonna be a lot easier for me to work down here yeah I almost want to place the moss and then do a little glob of glue behind it that way um I don't want any hot glue to be visible from the front and that glass is mounted in the front like it's got there's no taking that glass out yeah, no, it's in there. And so I'm just going to mix in, again, keeping in mind which way's what. I'm just going to mix in little pops and splashes of different colored moss. And I want it overly full. I like things looking uh, abundant, not skimpy or stingy, I guess. So just coming in, placing that, trying to be random, but also intentional. <laughs> trying to find a balance between those two, I guess we could say. I'm just getting all covered in cobwebs, the little hot glue clingy bits. Ooh, this one's gonna be a really nice piece for in the corner. So I'm just doing that and then pressing it, making sure that the hot glue is towards the back. Now also we do have some pine cones and things. I want to make sure that they are not going to disrupt the depth. Like I don't want them so deep that we're not going to be able to fit our painting in. So again, just putting some glue on the bottom of this and positioning. And then I'm going to do another little squeeze of glue into the back. And then I'm going to back that with I've torn off just a little piece of moss.
and it's it's good to keep in mind which corner this is going to be covering of our painting because you know you don't necessarily want to be covering up if you're particularly proud of a pumpkin <laughs> which I might be um, I don't want to completely cover it up and then there were elements like this thing here I thought would look really cool inside the shadow box but it is just too thick and I'm not willing to trim it down so we won't be able to use that today but one day I don't know could we have no that's hecka thick okay <laughs> And so now I'm just going to turn this and I'm going to continue working my way through. So I don't know if I'm going to put it into fast forward or if I just want to show you how it's coming along a step by step. Which do y'all prefer? Do you prefer a real time, um, you know, chit chat the whole time? I get emails weekly about how I talk too much, um, but I can't help that. It's just who I am, you guys. And see, I think that one might be a little too much for right there. So if you change your mind, change it quick. That way you can recover. Okay. Ooh. I do really like that, though. Hmm. Let's do that down in this corner, maybe. Here. Let's actually... I'm going to place the painting in it just a test fit for one but also I want to see how it's looking to see if there's something about the moss at the top that I want to change and the heater's fixing to turn back on so I'm gonna just trim those edges of those leaves back there's that coming through Ooh, bumping the tripod there we go so now this should be, we can bring this around, place it in, awesome, it's actually fitting, oh my gosh, I don't know what to spell. <laughs> so that's how it's looking with the moss and stuff in there too. So I'm kind of digging it, I can, I can dig it. Let's see how it looks though when it's all said and done. This is how the frame is coming along. These are some dried gomfrina. They're salmon gomfrina um, is the variety. And then a little sycamore bit and then some silk floral. But uh, I had picked Randy a little bouquet of the gomfrina from the front yard at some point during the summer and they dried just sitting there on his desk. And I figured that'd be a nice way to uh, to feature and preserve them and then some pine cones that some of our viewers had sent you know who you are thank you guys I mean it was years ago at this point hopefully if you're still watching hey <laughs> so the part about this that I'm really excited about and um, I've never done this before on something like this but it this is a battery pack for some little LED lights now they had do have varieties of this that use USB um, so you can just plug it in and not have to worry about batteries. Where I plan on putting this does not have any nearby um, ele like electrical outlets or USB ports or anything like that. So I decided to go ahead and make it standalone. Um, and I kind of just switch it on when it's prime relaxation time. And uh, or we'll probably just pop pop some uh, of, oops, of the rechargeable batteries in there. I'm going ahead and just taking the whole thing off the spool and I can't explain to you why. Not because it's like a secret or anything, it's just, I don't know, I was compelled. Uh, so it's probably not a good idea to have done that, um, but here we are. So I have this, let me 
make some space because I'd like to be able to set this just on the top or maybe mount it in the center of the back. So for now, I'm just setting the battery pack there on top and I want just the thin wire coming through. So I am going to do my first little glob of hot glue right there. And I'm gonna take this and I'm going to just press the wire into that hot glue and let it set up. And I'm doing this in real time with you guys so you can have a very realistic idea of how long, oh, that's very, very hot, ouch, um, <laughs> of how long this takes. And we can actually take just a little bit of water and smush that in and get it to set just a little quicker little faster and so now I'm coming in and I'm gonna just hold this down actually I had set the moss off to the side like oh I'm done with it I'm not done. let's use the moss to do this thing so I'm just well I've made a mess oh boy here we go so I'm gonna just take that and then I'm making sure to not put the moss over the little LED nodes, but I am just using it to smush and hide. Oh, it's everywhere. Okay, cleanup time. Well, the good news is um, I needed to vacuum anyways, so <laughs> here we are. Um, so I'm using the purple because it's just a nice kind of darker color backdrop. Um, and I'm gonna skip that little light node and then I'm gonna come around to here and that's gonna be our next spot. And I'm making sure that it's just kind of behind everything and doing just a generous squeeze and then some mush. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so excited for this. This project has been sitting on my table for so long. I'm just thrilled that it can be done. <laughs> So I'll take it where I can get it. So setting that there, doing a glob, making sure to encase the wire, and then just pressing that little bit of moss. There we go. The next one we're going to do down here. So I think, I think you get the idea. Now I'm making sure that I'm leaving this area clear so that I can still set in our painting. I think I'm going to call this a fairy frame. Because it, it really is, we're just framing a painting. But instead of making a little fairy house, we're making a little fairy frame. It's not quite book nook, but definitely just a portal into I'm standing on it into another realm. Oh, and I kicked the tripod. The crafter chaos is real today, you guys. Oh my goodness. So now we're going to do that. Also, I have no idea how long. Oh no, this. Anyways, <laughs> I have no idea how long this light is. And it has just occurred to me that I'm going to quite possibly have to do a second out layer around oh boy that, that yep I am tender and made of meat there we go so I'm gonna try to mount this pretty close in as tight as I can because it's very likely I'm gonna have to come through and um, do another layer sort of behind this so there's that clean the tip and smush I do like to tidy up as I go. I know you can supposedly just hit it with a heat gun when it's all said and done, but especially with the silk floral, or not silk floral, uh, dried real floral in here, I don't necessarily want to be, you know, heat gunning it. And coming around, just bending the wire, and doing a little glob. A little smush, smush of the moss. And 
let's go ahead and rough draft this out and see exactly how many repetitions around we're going to be getting. Woof. Okay. So this is quite a bit. So I'm going to continue on without you <laughs> and I will meet you here in the next step and hopefully be able to teach you all I've learned. It's been literally half a second since I clicked stop, but as soon as I stopped recording, I had the idea. I'm going to come through and just do like a, in sewing terms, it would be like just a baste stitch in the corner for each of these wires before globbing in all of this moss and everything and making it overly full. Like that's my fear is I'm afraid that I'm going to overfill this and then I'm not going to be able to fit the additional layers or that like all the lights will end up being in the exact same spot as each other as it makes its repetitions around. So I'm just coming through. Making sure to not get any kinks in the wire. Because we could, I mean, it didn't have to be super tight. Didn't have to not be either though. There we are. Starting to think this would probably work better if we had it where gravity's working with us. Like if we had this face down on a table or something. Okay, so we have this face down and I'm really glad that I made the decision to go ahead and just basically baste it into the corners first. Um, just it seems to be going much more smoothly. So I just lock that in. And since we did that layer of moss in the front, I'm not so worried about the hot glue just dripping all the way down into the front. And I'm, whoop, there it goes. <laughs> Lifted right off of there. You know, I say that, but now I've got little hot glue strings that bother me. <laughs> so let's not rush it. My, my tendency always, especially when recording, is to rush to hurry up and make it awesome immediately. And it's like, no, that, that's not how these projects work. Like, regardless of what may be represented in the, through the magic of editing, um, these things can take a lot of time, and that's okay. Don't let the time investment on a project like this deter you from diving in. Okay, so now we can come through and find spots that there are no lights between the three layers and we can do a little bit of a glob and just set that into place. And again, still using the purple moss to just kind of tack everything down together. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to hopefully still be mostly hidden by the moss that we put in the front. And I feel like I kind of get stuck in ruts sometimes, just based off of the materials that I have available and kind of just how I interact with them. Uh, so the past couple of fairy projects that I've done have actually all been for the same room. So that's why I am repeating a lot of these motifs with the chartreuse and purple. Um, also, that's kind of just the materials that I have in stock um, for making little fairy style creations like this. So um, don't feel like, though, that you have to be limit that you are limited by what I'm doing here. Use what resources and materials you have on hand, and by all means, like, definitely 100% follow your aesthetic. Like, if you don't like purple, then don't put purple in it. Uh, if you don't like these flowers, then use something different. The most of what I'm doing here is just a proof of concept as far as, um, doing a fleshed out shadow box style frame for a paint by number <laughs> or, or really any acrylic painting it doesn't or oil any painting period 
You could even do this with art prints, I'm sure. That would actually look really, really cool. And what a great way to be able to collaborate on, you know, on some level with your favorite artists whose artwork you have by making a custom frame for the artwork you enjoy. I don't know, I think that's pretty neat. So, or even like um, a print of like a photograph or a family photo or a beloved pet. Um, or you could just be creepy and like get the frame and leave the picture that originally came in the frame for like, that has like the dimensions and stuff on it. <laughs> and just leave like, you know, a picture of some, like just the stock footage actors that like, or models, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh no, my little flower, where'd that fall from? So yeah. Point is, do whatever you want. Okay, where'd you come from? I think you were right there. And so I'm gonna kinda leave you stuck in there, I think. That worked a lot better. I'm still gonna do just a touch of glue with a little bit of moss on top of it right over the stem. Just cause I don't want to have to be dealing with stuff that didn't, stuff that can't hold up. Like just because it's delicate doesn't mean it can't stay where it's put. There we go. And I'm pretty pleased with that still. And you can add some little bends and stuff into the wire too to make sure that it is actually tucked out of the line of sight. Okay, and now, whoop. Oh, that hot glue holds up, y'all. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring this down here. And I definitely do want to make sure... Ooh, I could actually try vining this around. I don't know if this is desirable or not, but it's what I'm doing. Yeah, just bringing that around. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of glue. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring or not, but she amazes me every day with how intensely she sleeps. <laughs> like just, she's, she snores like she's getting paid. Then right there, we've got a little spot. Honestly, I don't know if putting hot glue over the LEDs, I don't know if that would negatively affect anything or not. Hmm. Do y'all know anything about that? Like, if, if y'all have any advice or recommendation on things like this, I would love to hear it. Because I'm literally just bumping around into stuff up in here. Okay, so I'm going to go boop. Now, also, I love these two colors together. <laughs> um, so I do have a tendency to uh, make things that I think are beautiful. But I think, too, that the chartreuse, like this bright green and this purple, will look just perfect with the orange of the pumpkins. And then there were some elements in it that I'm like, why on earth would whoever designed this, like, I don't know who the original art artist is. Honestly, now I'm worried about, I hope it was licensed. I mean, I bought it off of Amazon and just kind of presumed. Um, but I really hope that the original artist got a cut of that. Uh, if anybody knows who the original artist is, let me know. Because they might not know that Amazon's <laughs> selling paint by numbers of their stuff. Um, but there were parts of it where there were, like, pink. Like, other than the hands and noses of the little known people. Um, and initially I was like, I don't, I didn't, I didn't really like that. You know, I was like, I don't get it. Like, eh. But... Now with the addition of these salmon pink gumfrina, I am super pleased that there's pink in there. And really, it did look good when it was all like said and done. It was just like the third color I was doing when I was painting the paint by number. And I, I didn't get, I was like, why is the stem of this pumpkin pink? <laughs> I've, I've grown pumpkins. I've never seen pink on a pumpkin stem. Um, but that's just my limited experience. Okay. I think that's glued in. Let's get this. Okay, first let's test it. Oh my god, I love it. Okay, we're gonna get the painting in here and then we'll unveil it. Okay. 
So now I'm taking this, I'm going to very carefully place it in. Just kind of squish mushing. Oh, thank goodness. I was really worried that it wouldn't get clear of the wire and stuff. And so now we can totally tuck those in. That's working. Excellent. Even going over the canvas too, that's really cool. Oh, except for right there. Now, ah, there we go. And just tuck in the canvas to try to make sure it goes under. There we go. There's a little bit of hot glue in the way on this one. Oh no. Maybe we'll try it from the other way. There we go. And oh, if it doesn't work for one from one way, let's try the other. There we go. Got past the canvas on that one too. And there's that. Okay. So from here, I would like to put this. Unfortunately, it's set up in a way that we can either. I think I would have to glue it on like this. Maybe we can wrap that around and glue it there. But then we're going to have to have that coming out quite far. I know what we'll do. Okay, so I'm going to start by, these are some stickers that we make and put in our booty boxes. And I'm putting one of our little pumpkin latte drink stickers over that one. And I have one of these, um, Millie, stop eating all the, <laughs> she's going around eating all the little bits of uh, moss. And then a little mushroom one that I'm just going to put right here to cover up that little sticky spot. Really, these are just for me. They are in the back of the thing. No one will know that they are there, but these are two of the stickers that I designed this year. And so I'm kind of just little Easter egging them there for future Vaughn, possibly whenever we're, if we're ever moving out of this house and we're packing things away. Um... I'll be able to look and see and be like, oh my god, it's that thing. I remember. So this I was just going to mount here with hot gluing a little thing of Velcro. And then I'd be able to just kind of buckle it in. And I think I'm going to do it horizontally. That way um, it doesn't slide out. It's being supported against gravity. So from here, I'm going to just do the hot glue, the width of this sticker. I'm going to set that, maybe. There we go. And I want to use an almost ridiculous amount of hot glue. I want this bound on really, really well. And honestly, I don't know if more is more, or if less is more, or what. But here we are. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to smush it. Oh, there goes that. This should be, this should be okay, right? <laughs> um, but this way, yeah, we'll hopefully be able to mount that just right there. And then we can take it off to access if we need to change the battery. But we can also leave it where it's easy to access for um, turning it on and off. So with that being said and done, I'm going to set this, then I'm going to wrap this around, and that works just perfectly, holding on to that. Now this may angle whenever it's mounted um, on the wall, it may angle the bottom up just a little bit, and that may not be desirable. Um, in which case you could totally mount it on the bottom or on the top or again just have the cord go down to like if you if you have it plugging in or using a USB port or something. So now I'm gonna flip it on and let's turn this around. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look at those little gnomes. Sorry, the, let me get a better angle of this. 
Oh my gosh, if you see bright like purple lighting, that's some grow lights that I have for my tropical plants that I keep inside during the winter. But yeah, we've got our little pine cones. Oh my goodness, I love this so, so much, you guys. <laughs> and I mean, all the work that we did on the pumpkin is basically covered up by some of the different flowers. Oh my gosh, <laughs> a double flowered right there. That's okay. That's okay. Sometimes that happens in a garden. But, uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to start calling these Comfrinas gnome noses uh, out in the garden because they totally kind of match that. And I never did put anything on the sign. But, I mean, a little bit of mystery. That's all right. And that is how we level up our paint by numbers you guys <laughs> if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in our um you know members exclusive after parties and booty boxes and all the different things that we do here at back to earth creations um check out the links down below we have our channel membership here on youtube we have our happy crafter club with booty boxes we have patreon lots of different options for you guys but really the best way to help support the channel is to just enjoy it uh if, if you're digging it like like tickle my like button give it a thumbs up all that um but yeah just keep it crafty you guys that's the best way to help support the channel is to just continue enjoying and partaking in crafting and we will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting, y'all. Bye. <laughs>